Cheers. Uh, good evening. Uh, as Adam said, my name is Phil Nash. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, my day job is a developer evangelist for a company called Twilio. Um, I imagine a lot of you know who that is because I left your company to go and work for them. Um, you guys know Twilio at all? <laughs> No, cool. All right, that's good. I get to tell you. Um, so we're a, a communications platform uh, for your applications to connect your users via voice, video, or messaging, and several other things, notifications. We, we keep releasing products at the moment. It's getting confusing for me to say this kind of thing because there's a lot of them. But uh, originally it was phone calls, text messages, and now we have video and other messaging, um, all as a platform that you can use using any of the languages or tools you already use. And that's Twilio, but I'm not kind of here to talk about Twilio, I'm kind of here to talk about uh, beer, or uh, the next beer that we can get that's uh, near to here. Uh, I don't mean in the cooler down at the back there, uh, there is obviously a superb selection of beer there. Um, but as we've kind of discussed like in this lead up, uh, this is kind of like um, going to be the story of how I actually left Desk Beers. <laughs> Uh, because this uh, demonstration, the code I'm going to go through and the stuff I want to show you is the stuff I uh, used in the uh, final interview I did at Twilio to get the job as developer evangelist. Um, I was required to do a 15 minute live coding presentation and, uh, and what you're going to see is that live coding presentation. However, I've got a bit more story around it because it's pretty boring if it's just 15 minutes of me writing stuff. <laughs> Although not boring enough that I didn't get the job at least, I'm happy about that. So yeah, um, I, I was at Min Digital for six years. I was part of uh, Despiers as uh, their modeling, uh, as part of the modeling contract. Um, however blurry they make it, you can still tell that's me, right? <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Um, and, uh, and it's an absolute pleasure to work there. And you know, uh, there was a place where uh, I remember walking across the office one afternoon to get a, uh, a cup of tea and being stopped and said, no, we need to taste beer now. And <laughs> I left all that behind. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why still. <laughs> um, I still buy the beer, that's, it works, it works. Um, because like, right, I eventually, I went to work for Twilio uh, as a developer evangelist. And this is kind of that story because and it, it almost reaches all the way back um, through my past and through the uh, development that I've done over my career. Uh, and the first part of that is uh, is about Java and how I thought I was never going to be a, a software developer. Uh, because during university, I had a horrible time. Most of the course was in Java except for like the one Haskell thing at the start, which I did and then forgot. And now everybody thinks Haskell's cool. but. That was months, years ago, far too many years ago to remember. The rest of it was basically Java, and nobody told me how to write Java, they just told me, do Java. So I was there on my Dell laptop that I could afford with uh, Windows XP, I think, and uh, a notepad uh, writing Java, which was just an awful idea. I did find a, a version of notepad that had syntax highlighting, but apart from that, <laughs> I had a horrible time. So I walked out of that university degree um, pretty convinced that uh, development wasn't right for me. Although at the time, when I should have been studying for those finals, those final exams, uh, I was actually rebuilding the site for my band. Uh, this site, this band, Hammer vs. The Snake, um, we uh, actually were at one point called Go Team with an exclamation mark and then The Go Team became popular, so we had to change. We played one gig without a name because we couldn't think of anything and then we just just stopped on this. <laughs> we just went with it and it was fine. And then you get to do all sorts of cool things with like hammers and snakes. I don't know. It was... I'm not a designer, but this actually is still live and, and is actually possibly my favorite design of all time that I've ever made. <laughs> I'm not a designer. <laughs> But, uh, but I was building this site, uh, and it was, this was the first site I actually built with uh, a full kind of um, appreciation of, of web standards and, and the technology like that. The previous two uh, had a horrible uh, mash of tables and things like that, as we used to build at the time. Uh, and this was that first go at that. It was also WordPress, I think, although it's now a static site, because as you can see, we, haven't, we don't play anymore. That was the 11th of April, 2008, that was posted. Uh, this is all static now. Um, but I was building that, and so that led me to the idea of web development and what brought me back into this idea of being able to be a developer, which is much nicer than not being a developer or having to think about Java anymore. Um, and so that led me to the front end and to um, um, becoming a front end developer. And when I eventually started working at Mint, I, I uh, had a great time like building more and more front end and then learning Rails and stuff like that. Uh, but it kind of like there was a there was a nice little peak uh, when Mint ran a, a conference called Bacon, um, 
Uh, this was in 2012, uh, although the title says 2014, that's because it's from the 2014 site to the last version of the conference that happened. But in 2012, I got to give a talk titled HTML5 is taking over the world, uh, which I blasted through in around 17 minutes from the half hour I had <laughs> uh, due to an excess of caffeine and, and a complete lack of uh, any experience of public speaking beforehand. Aside from two, uh, three lightning talks, which you do talk quickly in. This was the lightning talk equivalent of any kind of conference talk. Um, but it was, I was just so excited by all the new things and the exciting stuff that you could do in the browser and, and, and build into it at that point. Uh, and during this talk, I even um, I used an a offshoot version of Opera in order to use the Get User Media API for the first time to take a picture of myself on stage, uh, which looked terrifying. Uh, the, that's quite a big screen. And if your face is covering that much of it, it was a lot of fun. Oh, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. <laughs> um, uh, but that just led me to this excitement of everything front end and what the browser can do. Uh, and so that led me to the first part of this particular demo, which is going to be a web application to find us somewhere to get some beer afterwards. Um, and this is that application. I'll just bring Firefox out there. It doesn't do much right now. I've got some style uh, that's been built, some pre-built HTML. Uh, and here, it, uh, and, and a couple of JavaScript things which I'll tell you about. It's a Ruby application. We'll get to Ruby in a bit. Uh, that's all it does right now is serve up the index. Sorry, I'm going to get in the way. Uh, and, then, um, and then this is the template, the minimal possible HTML template that you can come up with. And then there is an empty list of stuff. Uh, but, uh, and, and right here are just two functions, bars found and beers found, such that when we find bars and when we find beers, we can plug them into the DOM. You do not want to find, uh, uh, sit around watching me write jQuery to create uh, HTML elements right now. Talking about how excited I was about the uh, things that the browser can do. And uh, I think this one actually uh, like is uh, thanks to the iPhone coming out and Steve Jobs' original idea that web apps would be the way forwards. <laughs> Uh, because uh, iOS Safari has had the geolocation object uh, for a long time, and it's, uh, it's, I think it's amazing. And it's, it's got to um, other uh, browsers, obviously, over time as well. And so it's just a, it's such a simple API. I love it. There's get current position, and there's the other one, which I can't remember right now, that continues to get the position. This is just a singular, where are you right now? Uh, and I've always loved its simplicity, because it pops up uh, your little... Um, uh, permissions thing asks, you know, is that okay to use location? It's always nice to ask at the time when it happens, not beforehand like well, Android did forever uh, until recently, I suppose. Um, and, uh, and you get the position, which is great. Uh, I also like actually that it's updated recently, certainly in Chrome, um, that this requires you to be on an HTTPS domain uh, now, uh, secure for privacy, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, obviously on localhost, which is what I'm doing this on right now, uh, the privacy is, is circumvented, so not a problem. Uh, but we just get the, uh, we get a, a number of stuff in that position, but the coordinates are the important thing for me. Uh, and then I have updated this talk since I first gave it because I want to use cool stuff like the fetch API, um, which uh, uh, many people like to make the uh, mean girls joke about, but I won't. Um, somebody got it. Yes. All right, that counts. Um, fetch API, which is a much better XML HTTP request. Um, it uses promises, and we're going to see that right uh, in a minute. And then also um, string interpolation in JavaScript, uh, because we have backticks which do string interpolation, and they do it like this. And it saves you having to do all those horrible close string plus thing opens plus open string again. And I'm very happy with all of that stuff. Uh, so we're going to put the latitude and the longitude uh, into this um, uh, thing here, into the request. And uh, the nice thing about fetch, as I said, is that it's promise-based. So we just go then. Uh, and then we can use fancy new uh, JavaScript uh, fat arrow syntax for the function, uh, which does an implicit return if you only have one line of it, which is nice. Uh, and we call JSON the response, which actually returns another promise. Uh, so we can chain along because that passes the JSON. Very nice. Um, I actually, in the original version of this, uh, used uh, jQuery's $.getJSON, uh, which was slightly easier. But I don't know, jQuery, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get off of using it. Um, uh, I would say we then get the data. But actually, this is where I can use one of my pre-built function, which is bars found uh, as that is going to take the data from that response and then populate uh, the page. Uh, and that's all we need for now. Um, and if I run that, it will ask me for that permission. I'm not going to do that right now because there is no URL on the other end that takes latitude and longitude. So we're going to have to, uh, we'll come back to that. 
Um, uh, because uh, not only uh, did I spend time at Mint uh, honing uh, whatever front-end skills I may or may not have had, uh, but they also um, uh, taught me uh, Ruby and Rails, and that was a, a wonderful thing. Uh, you'd have thought that might be why I decided to join, uh, but I did take the interview because it was five minutes from my house at the time, and it was a great decision. <laughs> I don't know how that worked out um, quite so well, but uh, I did get off of uh, working on a, on a very... Pr um, a closed source Java project where I was doing front end for it, not touching the Java, promise you. Uh, but uh, I joined Mint to uh, carry on that front end stuff and then learn, uh, learn a lot more Ruby and things like that. And, that's, um, and that led me to uh, a whole bunch of things. And one of the things tended to be actually that I ended up doing a lot of the API integrations, uh, which has worked well for me uh, going onwards as, as Twilio is very much a heavily, in fact, entirely API based company. Uh, has probably led into that. But back when uh, when we were early Mint, uh, we used to do a lot of um, social sites for television, uh, television programs and things like that. And uh, I'd, I'd inevitably end up doing the login with Facebook, login with Twitter, that kind of stuff. Uh, I've been through OAuth a number of times, uh, both ways, uh, built my own, built uh, OAuth server for um, uh, another product of Mint's called Quotables. Uh, which had an API that we never publicly released, as far as I'm aware, but it, it, it worked, I think. Uh, so I, you know, many people dislike OAuth, but I actually kind of like it. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but that led to, yeah, uh, just dealing with a lot of APIs. And that's what we're going to use right now, of course, uh, because I don't just have a bunch of bars in my head that I'm going to write down. Um, I mean, sort of do, but... Um, the Foursquare API uh, is, uh, is, is, one of, is my favorite one for this one. And uh, so I'm just going to write that um, uh, root out now. Uh, the long and the long there. Uh, and I actually have uh, in that config file that you can see at the top. Sorry, I'm standing in the way. In the config file I see at the top, I, I've de defined the uh, uh, authenticated Foursquare client uh, from the OAuth tokens that I got actually around two years ago, and they still work, which is really nice. Um, and uh, we're going to use that to search for venues. And that's pretty cool. Um, so in that, you pass in uh, the latitude and longitude. For some reason, they like it as one string, uh, which we're going to make with our Ruby string interpolation, which I like. Um, and that requires a comma in between. I don't know why they wouldn't just take latitude and longitude as separate things, but that is a decision they took a long time ago. Um, so we pass in the uh, latitude and longitude. We also pass in an intent, uh, which in this case is to browse because we're just looking. That's nice. He, the other intents, I think, are check in, uh, and it's a bit more accurate at that point. Um, we also need to add in a uh, radius. Uh, now, I normally put in about a kilometer. I'm willing to walk quite away for beer, although I do reckon that we're probably going to find some fairly close by. I'm, I'm pretty confident about that. Uh, and then finally, uh, we're just doing a generic search at this point. So. Um, this is the only bit of copy and pasting I'm going to do. Uh, these are the category IDs for pub and for uh, nightlife uh, bar, I believe. Uh, and uh, that's what I'm just going to add in there. And then we can take those venues and we're going to sort them by distance so that our map uh, makes, sorry, our list makes a bit of sense. We can tell which is closest, which is important. We're not going to go a kilometer today. Uh, so we're going to use the location of that venue, and um, it actually has a distance on it based on our latitude and longitude that we added in. And then if we just map over those, uh, we can get some interesting information that we'd want to see in our front end. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to get out a uh, name of the venue uh, and the ID, which is the Foursquare ID, and we'll see why we use that later. Uh, and an address, so we can pull up a map for this later as well. Uh, that's under location as well. Uh, and all we need to do uh, is return to JSON on that. Um, I like that Sinatra just has that built in. There's no extra things we need to do. Now we can go back to our application, refresh that, uh, and get the location. And hopefully we now see all our local bars. Now yeah, there we go. Hey. So the, the closest is the Gunmakers, ah, which is a good bar, right? <laughs> And then the craft beer company. We are spoilt for choice here. I am delighted. <laughs> Crown Towers, Gax, or Thans, or... <sighs> Okay, so we're going to have to spend quite a while with this app once it's done. Uh, but we're not done yet. Um, uh, because, you know, after all the, uh, the, the JavaScript, the Ruby, the APIs, and all that stuff, there is always the beer to think about. 
and that, uh, like as we started uh, uh, Deskbeers uh, at Mint, it was a, an absolute kind of joy to be a part of like what was a burgeoning craft beer scene in London at the time. And another thing that I'm terrified that I actually left behind in a way, because I have been in love with beer for an awfully long time, um, a surprising amount of time, uh, given that I think my parents brought me up when I was you know, small and not supposed to be drinking on um, the kind of stubby uh, French lagers, beer blonde or whatever it is, anything cheap you can get on a booze cruise. And, uh, and, and that was just, just awful. I've never liked lager and those are the worst. Um, especially if they're like the Tesco knockoff of the French. <laughs> Uh, beer d'or, I think that one is. Yes, the beer of gold. Sure, Tesco, you're absolutely right. Uh, and then my life was changed at a Welsh rugby club, at, I, I maybe the age of 15, 16, 17, I can't remember exactly, when my, uh, when my dad uh, bought me a pint of John Smith's Extra Smooth. Uh, that genuinely was a turning point, don't know why. Uh, although I do recall uh, exclaiming, ooh, that's smooth, which <laughs> I wasn't a particularly eloquent 15, 16 or 17 year old whenever this happened, but uh, um, it did change my life and that changed me to going to look for ale, uh, sorry, bitters and then ales. And then, you know, when all of this stuff came along, uh, it was an absolute joy that it, it came along. And, uh, and this brings me to one of my favorite applications, the one that actually does uh, bring this all around is Untapped. Um, uh, wonderfully, in that first bacon in 2012, uh, we had Greg Avola, the lead developer for Untapped speaking, uh, which was wonderful. Untapped is actually a, uh, a Cordova-based app, so it's available on every platform, but it's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript-based, uh, which you know came with my love of front end and that ability to write it once and, and run everywhere and then the the, the beer uh, it's all about the beer and uh, and that uh, this number is now out of date 1618 different beers as this is number 1620 uh, I knew it was going to happen when I came here and I was okay with that <laughs> follow me on tapped it's Phil Nash we'll all enjoy beers together um, and actually, I'm, I'm delighted that uh, Untapped finally, I think it was this year, got bought by another drinks-based startup e-company thing, uh, and that Greg and, uh, and the other uh, co-founder of it now work on it full-time, and it has been improving a lot since then, because they were just doing it as, as, as it wasn't the day job. It's absolutely amazing. For years, they've been running what I think is probably the most popular uh, beer social network uh, out there um, uh, on the side, uh, which is absolutely incredible. And it has an API, of course. So let's go and find uh, some beers. Um, and this is uh, a fun API, actually, because we, we can have conversations later about um, API design, perhaps, because this one's not the most fun. Um, so what we're going to do, first we need the JavaScript to do this. Um, so we are going to, I am going to abuse jQuery for this, because um, this, is gen uh, this is generating uh, links on the fly. And so I'm actually going to use event delegation from uh, uh, jQuery to just get the A's that are in the H2 and do this with it. So all we need to do is stop going to the link. Seems reasonable. And uh, and do another fetch. Uh, oh, actually, this is one thing I remember. I need to actually just scope that nicely. So the, this, in this case, is the link that we clicked. Uh, and then we're going to fetch uh, this, or indeed uh, link.href, uh, the URL. And chaining onto that, we're going to do the same response. Uh, JSON, unwrapping, parsing, and uh, finally, uh, we're actually going to get the data from that. Oops, and pass that into our um, uh, beer. Oops, uh, beers found uh, function, which is just going to build that list of beers within the uh, within the link or below the link that we clicked, uh, and. Um, using that data that came back. Uh, so that's all that needs to do. Um, I'll step back. It's really nice, I think, the Fetch API, because you get this kind of chaining syntax. Uh, and uh, you know, if this was to not finish, but return a promise of something else, then we can carry on and just keep doing stuff. And then you can have that kind of catch-all uh, error handler at the end, which I think is just really useful. Of course, it's going to work, so I'm not going to caption errors. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, and so. In the Ruby, uh, we can actually, um, this is what the link looks like. It's a venue and then the Foursquare ID. Uh, and so this is where we start to get into the interesting untapped API. Uh, so there is a nice Ruby gem for this. Uh, and uh, this is Foursquare lookup, uh, which should return us a venue 
based uh, an untapped venue based on the Foursquare API, uh, the Foursquare venue ID. Uh, and if it does, we will have a venue object on there. So if that exists, uh, if it doesn't, something's gone horribly wrong. Uh, and now I'm just going to give up at that point because <laughs> I don't expect it to. There's pretty good mapping of Foursquare venues to untapped venues in London, so I'm feeling confident about that as well. Nothing is going to break. Uh, but uh, what we are going to do is then get the actual info for the venue from untapped. And it has loads of stuff, um, which is really useful. And we'll see what we're looking for later. Uh, but we're just going to get the info. Uh, and this is where the, that API design comes in because we actually have to look at the venue lookup uh, venue object, which has an items list on it. Uh, which we want the first of because we only looked at one ID and obviously it's that first one. And then we'll get the venue ID off of that. And then we'll call for the venue within that object. Cool? Cool. Um, and that venue has my favorite function, top beers, uh, which also has items, um, which we're going to map over. Uh, much the same that we did with the venues earlier uh, in order to get some information back to the front end. And at this point, I'm just going to return the name of a beer, which is the item beer dot beer name. So there's some repetition in this API as well. And similarly, we also get the brewery, so we know what we're talking about. Because if it just says pale ale, I'm not going to. Uh, who knows? And that comes off the brewery object and the brewery name. And we'll just return some JSON for that. And that is kind of our application right there. Uh, I'll take a step back. If it all works, of course. <laughs> so we can head back to our app and refresh that, which is going to ask for me a permission for the. Um, we can always always share location, but I like to know it's doing its job. And so we get our pubs. We knew that was working, but now if we click on the gunmakers, we can see what their top beers are. Hopefully, nothing breaks. Nothing breaks. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so there we go. Um, Right there, we have a Mad Goose VPA from Portobello, which is probably quite nice. Harvey's Sussex Best, a classic, yeah. an absolute classic. Um, but that's not very many. I mean, there's more choice in that cooler down there than there is at the Gunmakers. I bet the Craft Beer Company uh, is, is looking better. Look at that. What have we got there? Ah, oh, have you tried Club Tropicana? It's absolutely lovely. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the ones where I normally like to try a new beer, but I came, to a, I came to a pub the second time and I was like, no, I have to have another Club Tropicana. Absolutely wonderful. This is looking good, I've got to say. Uh, I kind of want to try the Christmas Eve at a New York City hotel room by Evil Twin. That sounds amazing. Um, and like I said, I just did a little map there as well, so we can find our way there. Uh, just the link off of the address. That was quite simple. See, we're so close, it's amazing. Um, this has worked out nicely. Just stop it. All right, cool. We'll go back to the app later if we want to. We can explore more bars around here. Um, but that's, um, that's kind of uh, what I wanted to show you and what I, what I went through, because um, building, uh, building things over, over the course of my career, over the, from that horrific time, like badly writing Java in university, all the way up to, um, to, to starting off uh, Despiers and being a, a, part, or a part of the start of that journey, uh, which has been absolutely wonderful, uh, has finally uh, it, like led me to um, a whole bunch of things, um, uh, such as uh, uh, you know getting to do this, getting to hang out with other developers, getting to hang out with people who are writing and building interesting things, and uh, uh, and I hope that sometimes I get to build interesting things and, and and show them off too, and it's all a lot been driven by beer, so. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to uh, to share with you this evening. So um, before I uh, before I do completely stop and we go back and look at the beers, um, I do want to do a tiny little plug uh, because um, because I, you know I have to. Uh, we are uh, Twilio are hosting a, a conference in London on the twentieth of September. Uh, it's a Tuesday. It's going to be fun because it is uh, all about communications. We've got one day. It's going to cover an awful lot of Twilio stuff as well as some external uh, things, hopefully including uh, Katie Moe, who, uh, who, who spoke at our San Francisco version of this, uh, has a chip in her hand and programs it live on stage. Going to be amazing. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, we'd love to have you there. Uh, if you are interested at all, do please use the code PNASH20 and get 20% off of ticket prices, uh, which it's like 120 instead of 150 right now, I think. Um, and I look pretty good if, if this code comes up in the spreadsheets every now and again. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but it will be great, and then I'll take you all to the pub afterwards, I promise. Um, so yeah, that's me. Uh, that's me online. Uh, my name's Swanash. I'm developer evangelist for Twilio, and I like to find good beer. Thank you very much.